Three years ago today, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange walked into Ecuador's embassy in London to seek political asylum. The Australian's been there ever since. If he leaves the building, Assange could be arrested and he fears eventually extradited to the U.S. to face charges over the release of military documents which deeply embarrassed Washington. Ali Boyko brings us more. He's been stuck inside these four walls for three years now. But in that time, Julian Assange, who's going to turn 44 in two weeks' time, has managed to rack up a few milestones. He's made a bid for the Australian Senate, addressed the United Nations on human rights, been the subject of a Hollywood blockbuster, and even appeared in an episode of The Simpsons. Celebrities, including Yoko Ono, Lady Gaga and John Cusack, have popped in to see him too. Back in March, there was a small victory for the whistleblower when Sweden's prosecutor agreed to come and interview him here in London over allegations of sexual offences made against him in Sweden. But that appointment, which was meant to take place this week, has been cancelled because the Swedish authorities haven't obtained the right paperwork to enter the Ecuadorian embassy. So his fate still hangs in the balance. And his daily life is limited to a room so tiny that he's likened it to living on a space station. He's said to get takeaway food delivered here on a regular basis. Pizzas and sushi from nearby restaurants and a personal trainer comes to help him keep fit. But last year there were reports that he's suffering from health problems as a result of never going outside. In fact, out here, there's little sign that a famous figure lives just feet away. Well, except for the police officers who are ready to pounce on him if he decides to emerge. Have you ever seen pictures of this man? Richard Branson? No. Almost. He looks Almost a bit he like, looks like him. It. I don't know. Really. <laughs> He's a journalist or someone, so he can't go out because he done something wrong against the UK. It's Julian Assange. Oh, sure. OK, got it. I thought he was in Ecuador. Let him stay there for the rest of his life. <laughs> um, everything he's done is pretty epic. Uh, a lot of people don't appreciate the effort he's gone to to make sure people are aware of what's going on. Julian Assange is just the latest and most high-profile individual to take refuge in a diplomatic mission. And today's three-year anniversary isn't going to get him in the record books just yet. Afghan President Mohammad Najibullah took shelter in Kabul's UN mission for four years, five months and 11 days. Then there was a group of Russian Christians known as the Siberian Seven. They spent half a decade holed up in the underground mailroom of Moscow's US embassy before being allowed to emigrate. But the trophy for the longest embassy stint goes to an anti-communist Hungarian cardinal who took refuge in the US mission in Budapest in 1956. Josef Mincenti had been inside for a whopping 15 years. Last August, at a press conference that I attended inside the embassy, Julian Assange said rather cryptically that he was planning on leaving soon, but that he had no plans of handing himself in to the British police. So, once again, the reporters flocked here. But there was no dramatic finale. And considering that just this week the Ecuadorian president has said that Julian Assange could spend his entire lifetime here, some are beginning to think that there might not be one. Reporting from outside London's Ecuadorian embassy, I'm Polly Boyko. So Julian Assange may not be going outside the front door, but it's still costing Britain a small fortune to keep tabs on him. Three years of patrols have amounted to an estimated £11 million, from which nearly £3 million has gone to pay officers for working overtime. On a daily basis, just doing the sums, that equates to around £11,000.